Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to another video. And to all the new subscribers, thanks for joining in and joining this incredible journey we're on right now. And we're very early in this loop ring whole movement that's going on with this whole ecosystem. Because today, we're going to continue on and talk about a, a topic that I'll kind of continue into a couple or even several other videos because this topic is just the beginning. This is about crypto wallets. Now, crypto wallets will be and basically are just as important as the browser was for the web. This is the beginning. You have to start seeing this, not just your wallet, as just a place to hold your money, just to hold your card, whatever it is, because the wallet is becoming more than that. It's becoming more secure, like a passport. It is becoming something you carry around every day and how you use it and function and, and start to interact with people, friends, family around there for different holidays, seasons, events, and everything else. In Taipei, I use this card to get around MRT, to go shopping and do a lot of different things. The way we interact and use currencies is changing. And of course, you're you're on this new journey, you're on this ride and this whole ecosystem, it's amazing. And you gotta think about this as the value of cryptocurrency in the whole ecosystem, because you gotta talk about how we're gonna get more people adopted and in, into this whole blockchain system or jumping the chasm as we talked, as I talked about in discussion in a couple of videos back. Jumping the chasm because that's the most important of more mainstream adoption. This could be one way. And this is something that it's kind of bridging the old world with the new world. All right. And this is something called the Loop Ring Red Packets. If you already downloaded Loop Ring Wallet and you've seen this already, it's fantastic. It's an interesting way. And you're wondering, how did this come around? And you probably read a little bit of history. But it's important to understand the greater implications and also the manner in which it can be used. Now, if you think about this as a gimmick or just a cultural correlation, that's fine. But I want you to expand the idea of your wallet and wallets to social media applications and anywhere you can think about the possibility of how your regular everyday wallet and your social media apps that we have on our phone can really be stored and used on our wallet. Now, for one thing that's coming up very soon in about two months is Chinese New Year. Now, this originally started again last year, 2000, February 2001, when they started the Red Packet Initiative. Because in China and Taiwan and other parts of Asia, they use something called the red envelopes. They're a traditional Chinese gift-giving custom on very special occasions. Any kind of celebration, birth of a new kid, weddings, Chinese New Year, and most especially, even getting bonuses from your company. Now, when you give red envelopes, they're filled with cash because cash means good fortune and also blessings for the future when you use your money. Now, when you get a red envelope on Chinese New Year, it's important to say that you keep it and you put that red envelope on your pillow for good luck. And you can only open it when Chinese New Year ends. All right. And this is important because there's a lot of culture that's brought into this. And I, I think this is an important part of this whole app. It's opening a lot of new doors and connections to different parts of society and also different ways that you can use cryptocurrencies and wallets to help benefit your community that you're in. Community of, you know, what, who's around you, your family, your friends, even coworkers. Now, the average red envelope can have about 100 US dollars in it for Chinese New Year for kids, even for family, uh, even for weddings, uh, childbirths and events, bonuses. It can go for hundreds, thousands, even millions of dollars. You know, that's a lot. But the idea of giving this, it's the, it's the thought when you give this. So because the color red over here in Asia is associated with massive good luck. And it's pretty much opposite in the West, right? We see the stock market over here in Asia, Red seen as good in America and the West, red's going down. But think about this as good luck. And same cash. Cash is extremely, extremely important. But right now, this whole red packet is based on Ethereum. Now, the whole red packet idea and the way it's been used right now and implemented, you're going to be able to send or receive red packets privately to friends, family, or even publicly to anyone on the Loopring wallet. All right, so you can specify which token you want to send, how much you want to send, and how many people you want to be sent it to, and even split it up. And who, and who you want to send it to. Now, the three ways you can send this red packet. One is called a relay red packet. Number two, the lucky red packet. Normal three is just a normal red packet. Now, a relay. This is a sp this specifies a total amount you want to send. Total amount also of people. So you get a random share of the packet. If they share with others via QR code, they will get half the amount that and the next person receives that as well. For example, if I send a, a packet of, say, a thousand tokens... And I'm going to split that among 10 people. You find one, you open it up, you receive, for example, uh, 83 and a half tokens. You click share, 
which generates a new QR code for you. You share it to Twitter or another accessible app. Someone opens that, it's for 95 or another random amount. They, they receive 47 out of 5 and you receive 47 out of 5, half of that. There's some interesting ways that this can be done. Now, if you heard that, think about this, accessing this on Twitter. Using this to interact with other applications, not just on between your wallets, but think of other web applications. Instagram, YouTube. I'm not going to say anything else, but I think just that's just beginning. I won't say Discord, but whatever app you're using, why not? The possibilities are there. All right, now the next one's called a lucky red packet. Lucky, this is going to be interesting. Specify a total amount you want to send and a number of people. Each person gets a random share of the total packet amount, which is pretty cool. It's completely distributed, randomized. So if you get 1,000 coins, 10 people, one person opens up, they receive 90. Someone else opens up and receives 125. Next person op opens up, receives 250. And it goes on and on. And I think that's really a great part for Chinese New Year. Lottery is huge over in Asia. People go completely crazy spending thousands of dollars, or I'll say hundreds of dollars a night spending on scratch out tickets and doing things just to get lucky. Now, the last one's called a normal red packet. You specify a total amount and a number of people. Each person will get the same share of the total packet amount. Say 1,000 thousand coins and 10 people. You find one, you open it up. 10 out of 10, someone else opens up and receives the same amount again and again. So this is very interesting. So again, understanding this and how they are, because you got to understand how the loop ring layer two, it's basically, if you're familiar with the ZK rollups, and how this lucky red pack is going to be on and off the system. All right. Now the loop ring two account in yours and yours only, because it is very secure. But once you take that off, you send the money out, it is going to a centralized database. All right, and that's important because the layer two reduces fees. And again, it's giving access to more people who you can now link that wallet with it. And again, it's going to add more options. And I see this as opening more doors and more doors and more doors, just like a Merkle tree. Have your wallet right now. Basically, most wallets have a one to one ratio up and down. But if Merkle tree, things come down and there's so many more possibilities. So the developers and user and user experience have to get involved in this. There's so many great ideas I have. And I'll talk about these in the next couple of videos. Um, I'll share some of them, but I want to really expand upon these more and see about the possibilities for this. Because again, this is just the early stage. If you think about where wallets were a couple years ago, and even some wallets now like the Robinhood wallet, that I kind of equate it to the 1971 Ford Pinto. <laughs> if you know anything about the Ford Pinto, which is a car that was rushed into production, and of course, when they rushed something in production, the 1971 Ford Pinto had a fuel tank, and if it had a vulnerability, it was rear-ended, low speeds, the fuel tank could ex basically catch fire and everybody could be killed inside. I think that is a lot of these wallets. I don't really trust a lot of them because, they're again, they're rushed out there and not a lot of thought put into a lot of security. And again, we'll talk about security in other videos. I do have a lot, a lot of topics to discuss because this is just the beginning stages and I kind of try and look at a lot of our options for what's safe and what's not safe and how what what can go good, what can go bad. And that's the great thing about cryptocurrencies. The early stages of this, it's open for discussion and how we can help each other kind of create a more stronger ecosystem through all this. So to all of you out there, guys, gals, stay strong, stay warm, game on.